Okay, this is solving a distance rate time problem using a system of linear equations. Now here I do have two examples that I want to cover. So the first has to do with two airplanes leave an airport at the same time and travel in opposite directions. So here's the airport to me, this plane's going in that direction, that plane's going in that direction. Um, it says one plane travels 82 kilometers per hour slower than the other train. So we know that distance equals rate times time. And I obviously have two different trains here, right? So I'm gonna say the first train and the second train. And the only thing they're using to distinguish the two is that one is faster and one is slower. So I'll call this one the faster and this one the slower. Um, and I do know something about the rates. Okay, so it says one plane travels 82 kilometers slower than the other. Now I could put the X um, for either one of them and then the Y for the other. But what I do know is that one of them is going to take um, is going to be the second one minus 82. Now that means that this one would have to be the faster rate. So because the slower rate would equal the faster one minus 82, right? So I should probably switch my variables over here because I right now I have them in the wrong spot. Y should be the faster and X should be the slower, okay? Or I could have swapped them here instead and left them alone there. You just have to make sure that everything is consistent, okay? So then now it says, if the two planes are this many kilometers apart after seven hours, what is the rate of each plane, okay? So then I know that the time is seven hours for each of them because they left at the same time. And then if I want to get the distance, all I have to do is the rate times the time, which means 7y for this one, the rate times the time, which means 7x for this one. So I know that 7y plus 7x should equal the total distance. One plane's going in this direction, one plane's going in that direction. I have this distance and I have that distance in expressions, but I do know the total distance. If I add those two numbers together, the total distance they'll be apart is 12054. So there's my system of equations. Now I typically like to use the elimination method, but you notice x is already all by itself, so it leans itself to the method of substitution. So I'm gonna take my bottom equation, and instead of x, I'm gonna use y minus 82. So then I'm gonna distribute my seven, I'm gonna add this constant over to the other side. I'm gonna combine those terms. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by 14. And I get 902. So now I know how fast one of the planes is traveling. It's nine kilometers per hour. But if I wanna figure out the other one, again, you have two equations to pick from. This one's probably easier to use than the one that has the coefficients. So I'm gonna plug y into that top equation. And I get that x equals 820 kilometers per hour. So in the computer, when it asks you for which one's the faster, which one's the slower, you know, you know which one. Remember, Y is the faster. So this would be the faster plane. And then of course, X is the slower. So this would be the slower plane. Now I am going to do a second example because it's kind of a different scenario, okay? This one says, uh, you have planes still, but one is going 
against the jet stream and then one is going with the jet stream. I just want to make it clear when they talk about jet stream, they mean the wind. See, the wind has its own force, which is going to slow you down or speed you up, depending on whether you're traveling with that wind or you're traveling against that wind. So if it helps, you can replace the word jet stream with the word wind, and it might make a little bit more sense to you, other than just seeing jet, jet stream, jet, jet stream, still air, jet, you know, all these different things, okay? Um, so... It says, flying against the wind or against the jet stream, a jet travels this many miles in eight hours. So that's going to help me with my setup. So I've got traveling against the jet stream or the wind and then traveling with the jet stream or the wind. Okay, those are my two different cases. And it says I traveled against six seven two zero miles in eight hours and then with the wind or with the jet stream the same jet travels this many miles in seven hours what is the rate of the jet in still air and what is the rate of the jet stream or the wind okay so remember if I'm going against it the wind the wind is gonna slow me down so no matter how fast my jet stream is, I'm gonna get slowed down by the wind. So that means X equals the jet speed, and then Y is going to be the wind speed. And I think the words they use is the jet in still air, and the word they use here is jet stream. Okay, and that will help us later to know which letter to plug into which box. Here with the wind, it would help my rate go faster. Okay, because the wind is going to help push the plane forward faster. Okay, so now I've got my two equations. So remember, to get these, you have to do 6, 7, 2, 0 equals 8 times my rate is 7 times this rate which could be 8x minus 8y equals 6, 7, 2, 0. 7x plus 7y equals 7, 5, 6, 0. These are already opposite signs, but I will have to multiply the top equation by 7 and the bottom equation by 8 so that they have the same number and they'll cancel. So I get 56x minus 56y equal to this huge number, um, 56x plus 56y equal to this huge number. If I add these, I will get 112x equal to one zero seven five two zero and then if I divide by 112 to solve for X we get 960 so that's X 960 I can plug it into either one of these equations however I will still need to find Y I would much rather plug it into the equation that's gonna have a positive Y because it just means less manipulation when I have to figure out what y is. So I'm going to take the bottom equation and I'm going to use the expanded version where we actually already multiplied by 7. So I'm going to take 7 and instead of x I'm going to put 960 plus 7y equal to 7560. I get this number And then I'm going to minus that number to help solve for y. And then I'm going to divide by 7 to completely finish solving for y. And I get that y is 120. So remember, we labeled our variables up here. So this is the jet speed in still air. And this is the, the jet stream or the wind.
Okay, that's pretty hard wind. I don't know that we would actually be flying a plane in that kind of wind. But we worked out the problem and this is what it came out to be.